Hi guys, so today I'm going to talk about texturing. Uh, the first way I'm going to show you is going to be really, really simple and it will work for most of your objects. So if I create a cube, and let's say I want to texture it like a rock, like this was, this was made of stone. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my hypershader. So the hypershader is this little round icon here. Um, it's a shortcut to the hypershader. And the hypershader shows all of the shaders and materials in your scene. So these ones we don't need to worry about. This one is Lambert 1. So that is what everything by default, the material that everything by default is connected to in Maya. So it's that grey kind of texture. We don't want to touch that. For example, if we make it like bricks or stone, then everything that you create will have that stone texture attached to it, which you don't usually want. So let's create a new Lambert. And there's all kinds of different materials here. I just recommend you use Lamberts and Fongs. Use a Fong for reflective material. That's a shiny material. So if you want to create uh, glass or anything that you want to be shiny. Um, otherwise, just use a Lambert. That's just the standard material. So just double click on that and that will create Lambert 2. And it will look exactly the same as Lambert 1 until we attach a texture to this material. So just to keep things organized, I recommend you name your different materials. So let's name this stone. And you can name it down here. Um, and here we can also change all of the properties. We can change how transparent it is, all the different settings. We want to add a texture file to this. So I'm going to go to the color channel. And this little um, checkerboard here, um, I can use this to add a file to the color channel. You can, of course, just add a color here. So if you just wanted an object with a flat color, you could also just use a color. So I could apply that, this uh, material straight to the object without any texture file, if I wanted to be really quick about it. Obviously, it's going to be very flat. But if I hold down my middle mouse button and drag it onto the object, it will apply the material. So you can just use colors if you're going to keep it really simple. But let's add let's add a texture. So if I click the little checkerboard, I can attach a file. So just click on the little file. And then click on the little folder where it says image name. Click on the little folder and that will take you to a little pop-up and you can find your image file. So I've already got my image file. I've copied it into source images. In the Maya project file, you could go and look around on your computer and find the file, but I've got it here, and I click open, and you can see now it's overridden that red color, and you can see that it's now stone is now attached. So now I can drop it straight on. So I'll close the hypershader. Now you can't see that stone texture until you hit six on the on your keyboard. So hit six on your keyboard, and that will turn the textures on. And there you go. Now this looks pretty good, but the more I change this cube, the more stretched the material will appear. So you can see that it's stretched. So in, if you if you have an object that's not a cube or a sphere or any of these objects, you like this. When it, once it becomes a different shape than the cube, you have to reproject it, and we can do that in the UV editor. So we can go to UV up here. And you need to make sure that you're in the modeling drop down, otherwise you won't see that. So you need to make sure you're in the modeling drop down, UV, UV editor. And we get this pop up. And you can see why it's becoming stretched here. You can see this is your object laid out flat. And it still appears like a cube, those six square sides. So we have to project it to make it look more like this oblong shape that we've created. So all we do, hold down your right click to bring up the marking menu and go to object mode. So it will appear green. Then the next thing to do is if you if you make sure you're in the poly modeling shelf, you can freeze the transformations and delete the history. And that just gets rid of all the baggage, all the changes we've made to this object will go and it's kind of like resetting the object. Next we go to create in the UV editor and we hit automatic. And you can see now 
that it's laid out our object in a far more accurate way. We've got the sides, we've got the faces, and we've got the ends all laid out there. Let's say you wanted your material to appear smaller, if that makes sense. If you wanted the texture to appear smaller, you would select the faces. So first of all, go to face mode, then drag, left click, drag to select all the faces. Then go to scale here, to the scale tool. And we can just, in the UV editor, scale up that texture map. And where it goes over the edge of the texture, it then begins to tile it. So the texture appears much smaller. Now you can see it has tiled it. Some textures will work better for tiling. You can see the little joins where, it's, where the texture is tiling. Um, but it still works quite well. We can also do it the other way, so we can scale it down to make it smaller. And you can also rotate it. So let's say it was a book with a title on it, you'd want to rotate it so that it's facing the right way. Um, so the lettering wasn't upside down or something. Now just doing this will work for most objects, but let's say you had a more complex object. Let me create something else. So I'll start with a cube. And I'll flatten it down. And let's go into face mode. And I will hit extrude here. And I will scale that extrusion down. Lift it up. Extrude again. And extrude again. and extrude again, scale it down. So what I've kind of tried to create is something like a framed picture. So if I apply, let's just use that Lambert one. You can see that everything's stretched, so I could reproject it. So if I go to UV, freeze the transformations, automatic. So it's not stretched anymore, but what we, what we want is we want an image, like a pic, like a painting in the middle, and then we want different a different material um, on the uh, frame itself. We might want a gold kind of frame. So we need to do something much more complicated to actually turn this into something accurate. So let's go back to UV editor. And you can see that it's all nicely laid out. What we'll do is we'll take this map, this UV map out of Maya, take it into something like Photoshop. We'll use this as a guide to, pl to place the different texture files and then we'll import it back. Hopefully that makes sense. So first of all we need to export this um, map. So we'll click the little camera, and this little pop-up pops up. You just want to make sure that you're on PNG, usually. Everything else looks fine. Look at where um, Maya is going to send this image. Um, it's sending it into images in the Maya project structure. So I'm just going to click Apply and Close. I've already got one there, so you might want to change the name. Um, so I might change it to frame, something like that, picture frame, frame picture, CV. Right, that's now going to send it out. And we can now go into our Maya project structure. So if you go to documents, and it will be in Maya, projects, default, and then it will be in images, frame picture. And you can see our map has been uh, exported. So I can now take that into something like Photoshop. So it's kind of hard to see. I like to um, to duplicate the map a few times to kind of make these lines a bit thicker so I can actually see what's going on. So if, it, if I hit on, um, on Mac Command J on Mac, I think it's Control J on Windows, that'll duplicate it a few times. You can kind of see what's going on. I can flatten it again just by hitting Command E. 
and it flattens it. Okay, so what you probably want to do is you've got all of these various pieces. You might want to swap between Maya and Photoshop just so you can work out what's what. So if you hover your mouse over the uh, model in face mode, you can see uh, what parts fit with what. So that's the bottom of the frame. This is the this is the the picture. That's the back. You can also use edge mode to work out which way up it should go. So sometimes that's not really clear in the way it's laid out. So if I go into edge mode and I go, yeah, that's the bottom of the um, of the painting, and that relates to that edge. So that is part of the frame. That's the bottom part of the frame. So you can kind of work out where things should go. So I can go back to Photoshop. And I've got an image all ready to go here. Um, Leonardo da Vinci painting, which is just going to be copied and pasted in. So it's, it's just Command C, Command V to copy. And I'm just going to... I'm kind of stretching it a little bit, but never mind. And you can use any kind of images. You could paint in Photoshop. You could import textures off the internet. You could scan watercolor pictures in or collage pictures in. There's so many ways that you could texture. Let me just scale it up. And I'm going to use Photoshop just to kind of paint the frame. You don't want to be painting onto the map itself unless because you'll get these lines when you um, when you Let's put the let's put the map on top. That'll be kind of more useful. I don't want to be getting any on the on the drawing itself. There we go. I'm just kind of messily doing it. You can obviously do it much better than I'm doing it now. Um, you can put little highlights on. So, for example, I could put on. Some little highlights on the edges. I could even use the edges itself to create those highlights so I could duplicate the map, turn it off, pull the levels up to make it white, add a Gaussian blur. This is all unnecessary but I'm just Showing you ways that you could kind of create something interesting. So now the edges of the frame are going to be kind of brighter than the middle bits. But yeah. So I'll now export my texture. This obviously looks like a mess. It doesn't need to look beautiful. But it's just how you place your textures. I'm going to um, export as a PNG. And I'm going to send this frame texture. And I'll go back, find where it's gone. So that frame texture has gone to images. I'm going to paste it into source images. And then I'll go back to Maya. And I will go to object mode. And then I'm going to go to the hyper shade. And I'll create a new. I might use a fong, so I might have it kind of reflective. And then in the color channel, I'll connect that file. Um, and I'll connect the texture. And now I should be able to drop that on. And you can see it's kind of shiny because it's using a fong. But that kind of works. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you get stuck on anything, do let me know and we can help sort it out. Thanks very much.